way before the mayhem of the demolition derby and the thrill of the tractor pull. There was head-on Joe Connolly. In 1896, the enigmatic Connolly appeared before the State Agricultural Society and offered them a most unique opportunity. His plan was simple. Find a big open field, lay down some rail track, put a couple old locomotives on it, and then have them smash into each other. Joe Connolly came from a farming family out of Colo, Iowa. The census tells us that he was in the entertainment business, and his obituary tells us that he was a theater manager. But what we remember him for are his train crashes. Connolly likely got his inspiration from a head-on train collision that took place in Columbus, Ohio in early 1896. Uh, 1896 was really the birthday of uh, any train collisions in the U.S. There were three collisions that year, and Connolly was one of the train wreckers in that business. He had three runs at, at wrecking trains at the Iowa State Fair, 1896, 1922, I believe, and 1932. Although not the pioneer of these scripted spectacles, Connolly was the most famous of the showmen, wrecking 146 locomotives and earning the nickname Head on Joe. In fact, in the mid-1970s, Walt Disney Productions began research to produce a film based on the old train wrecker's life. While each stunt had its own unique challenges, the Iowan used a familiar formula for every smash-up. The setup was took some took some doing. They had to lay a um, expanse of track down the middle of the field. Uh, Connolly would buy old locomotives that were retired, still running, but not uh, headed for service again. They were headed for the scrap heap anyway. And like today's action movie. The train collision needed their heroic star. And wherever the show, there were always plenty of volunteers for the job. Uh, engineers would vie for the privilege of getting to start up the locomotives and then getting to jump off at the precise moment when the locomotives had achieved speed. So it was a little bit risky for those folks. It was also risky for fair organizers who were desperate for something to save their fledgling festival. They were thought to be the, the financial salvation, that this would be the, the big event that would bring uh, paying folks in to see the fair. It was thought to be a moneymaker. And, and there was always huge hype beforehand, and sometimes the hype was bigger than the actual crash could realize. Um, across the country, during um, the decades in which uh, the, the train crashes ran, they attracted big crowds, tens of thousands of people. Estimates for the Iowa State Fair crashes are in the range of 40 to 70,000 people, which is a huge number of folks. Connolly also continued refining his shows for the crowds. He learned to doctor them a little bit. There were um, torpedoes, they were small uh, devices meant to go bang on the tracks. They, they, were, they were originally developed as a safety measure to warn other trains that the trains were coming. He would put those on the tracks to, to have little explosions happen before the big crash would happen. And then in the later uh, crashes at uh, the Iowa State Fair, he would add passenger cars at the end filled with flammable materials ready to burst into flame when the, when the two uh, trains collided. So just extra thrill for, for the spectators. I think that since our lives are so ruled by machines, that there is a kind of delight in seeing these things go down. <laughs> <laughs>